Hello everybody, this is Pundafrugal Streamer, and I wanted to talk about uh, Streamlabs OBS and a filter that is built in there. This also applies to OBS Studio, but I want to focus on Streamlabs OBS because, number one, I think a lot of newer streamers are probably going to go to Streamlabs OBS because of its simplicity with the UI. Just easier to understand. I think the UI is laid out better, and it's more geared toward using on a single PC. I said dual streaming PC, which will probably be more for for enthusiast streamers, professionals, that sort of thing. But I wanted to talk about compressor because it's vitally important. I think that is a of all the filters there, I think it is probably one of the most needed sources uh, or filters used for your microphone source. First of all, before I do that, I wanted to show you something that's happened here recently, and this is a thank you from Streamlabs for my Streamlabs OBS review video. And so they uh, gave me this a couple days ago, a little thank you card and the raw file for this character so I could use this in my future content, which I will do so. I've actually been wanting one of these for a long time and they have come through and done it without me asking. I didn't ask them to do this. They just did it out of goodness of their heart and out of appreciation for my video, which has done really well. Thank you to you guys. And uh, thank you Streamlabs for this because like I said, I love it and I will be definitely using that. So let's go ahead and get into compression. So I've got Streamlabs OBS up here, and what I've done is I have a compressor filter open. I'll show you how to get it that real quick, it's easy. So I have my mic aux here. This is my microphone, as you can see the sound going up and down. And what I what you need to do is if you wanna add compressor, just go to filters, click on their little cog there, go to filters, hit the add uh, sign there, and drop the pull down menu down and hit compressor and then add done. So when you do that, then you'll have the compressor listed here and you have a little eyeball. Uh, make sure if you want compressor working that the eyeball is not uh, grayed out, unchecked like that. Make sure that it is open. Okay, now let's talk about each of these settings, okay, because they're important. Uh, ratio, ratio, all ratio is, is the amount of uh, compression that is added once the signal goes above threshold. Okay, so here, if I have any signal, it goes above minus 20. And say, for instance, I have my ratio set two to one. Um, if I have a two, if I have a two dB peak above above threshold, then the compression will add will compress it down to one dB out. So instead of it being two dB, they'll compress it and it'll be one dB. Okay, so that's how two to one works. Three to one. If you had a you know three dB it would take it down to 1 dB. Uh, that's just basically how it is. It's just a ratio. Uh, but the higher the number, the more compression is added. Okay. The lower the number, the less compression is added. It's that simple. Threshold. Threshold is a level that you set in dB. Okay. It is important that you understand where your microphone is actually measured. And that's why I would be a studio, in my opinion, is very important because they've added this VU meter in the audio mixer where you can actually measure your microphone level. Um, and you can see if your microphone is peaking and going into red, they recommend that you try to get it in the yellow, uh, which they have three color codes, green, yellow, and red on the VU meter, which is standard. And they recommend that your microphone be in the yellow. Well, I have my threshold set to minus 20, which is at the beginning of the yellow. Okay, because you know, you're going to have your signal go above that minus 20. Even with compression, you're going to have signal go above it. So it's important that you have it set so that it goes into yellow, but it stays out of red. Okay, because like I said, you don't want peaking. You don't want distortion. You don't want to blow your eardrums out of your, uh, from your viewers, that sort of thing. And that's what compression does is it's lowering the signal uh, top end so that you don't cause any distortion, any overdriven signal. And it hurt, you know, and it keeps you from messing up your mix. So that is a uh, threshold set. I have that set at minus 20. Uh, my attack, okay, attack is how quickly I want compression to be added. Uh, so once the signal goes above my threshold, okay, it will take one millisecond for 100% of the compression effect to be added. Likewise, with release, it will take 35 milliseconds for the compression effect to be totally removed once it goes below the threshold. 
Okay, so that is how attack and release work. And now here is something that is important with algorithmic output gain. As you can see, I've added a 3 dB output gain. Okay, so let me talk about how this whole thing works. So if you're, you have a, this is your window of difference uh, measured source level or uh, volume levels for your microphone that you're measuring. You have the lower end where it's at, you have the upper end here, okay? So if you have it peaking and you want to bring and you want to add compression, so what's going to do is you're going to bring that uh, upper threshold down. So it's going to make a smaller band of sound, okay? A lot of people think that compression also will bring this up so that you have this little window, this little tight window, but that's not actually the case. Compression purely just lower, okay? When you add output gain to that, you're bringing this whole window up. Okay, you're not bringing just the bottom end up, you're bringing the upper end up too. It's all both, they're all connected, okay? That's how output gain works. And sometimes you may have compression added so much that the resulting signal is too low. So you wanna add a little output gain, kind of bring that back in and uh, get it back to an, a, a nice level that uh, works well with your mix. Uh, some of these mixers out there, and I'll talk about this real quick, if you have a hardware mixer and it's a one knob type compression, all of these actions that are going, that are right here, all of these are all built into that one knob. So uh, a lot of people, I've seen people that have these hardware mixers have talked about how compressor brings up the low end and uh, you know, you can back away and it's still the same and all that. All they're doing is they're adding output gain and they're bringing the whole thing up, uh, and that's what it does. It doesn't. It does not just. You know, it does not just bring the lower threshold up. It's not doing that at all. Compression purely lowers the top end. Okay. All right, guys. That is really it. That's compression in a nutshell. It's very easy. Um, go out there. Uh, re I recommend you uh, maybe trying to get just download OBS Studio real quick purely so you can measure your microphone and then you have a baseline of where you can set in uh, Streamlabs OBS and then you know go ahead and get your compressor set up because I'm telling you people you really need it for your microphone I, I believe that it is a much needed feature and something that um, will definitely improve your overall mix going out to your viewers so go out there and get it Please, guys, it's awesome. This is Pun to Frugal Streamer. I do appreciate all the support you have given me. Uh, it has been huge these last two months, and you just do not know how much I appreciate all the support you've been giving. But make sure if you like this video, hit that like, subscribe, check out my playlist for Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio, Voice Meter Banana for audio mixing. Uh, I've got a, a, a Streamlabs chatbot uh, tutorials. Go out there, use my playlist, learn about all these free tools that are out there for you to build what I would say is a professional live stream. Go out there and give it a shot, guys. All right. Again, this is Pun Frugal Streamer. Have a great week. We'll see you out there. Bye-bye.